toxic chat, pillar spam, and server lag that will make you cry. Why would anyone play official PvE? Well, I spent 100 hours, yes, real life hours, playing on an official PvE server, and it was an experience. This is not your normal 100 days. No challenges, no boss fights, well, maybe, we'll see. Just an extremely casual and super chill experience. If you ever wondered why people play official PvE, or you just want to sit back and relax and enjoy some chill arc vibes, I think you're going to like this one. So let's get into it. Day 1 the hardest part about getting started is finding a good server, especially in these early days where server transfers aren't yet a thing. Every server is going to be pillared, and every server is going to be at least some level of toxic. So there are really two things that I usually look for when determining if it's a good server. Number one, the general vibe of the chat. Are people trading? Are people offering help? Are people generally playing this like a PvE server and not trying to treat it like PvP? And the second thing is ping. But this time around I also looked to see how many days the server has been on for. The PC version released well before the console versions and the PlayStation version was the last one to release. Along with it came some new servers. The newer the server, the greater the chance that I could still find a decent base spot. So I hopped on one that was pretty fresh, surely to be filled with a bunch of PlayStation players, but it really doesn't matter with crossplay, and there was definitely some toxicity in the chat but it seemed to be that pretty common stuff. It was people bickering over drops being stolen and people complaining about pillars. This is all standard stuff that you'll find on every single server. So as long as things don't get too extreme, this seemed like a reasonable server to get started on. So I decided to call it home and I began leveling up my character. I went up and down the beach, focused on crafting things. I wasn't about to find myself any sort of permanency on these starter beaches because they will be completely claimed by now. So there was no point in trying to farm up a bunch of things, I just needed some levels. I passed by this build, which I know I've seen on YouTube pretty cool. Another thing I really enjoy as a builder is seeing some other people's work, whether it's people who created themselves or just built it off of someone that they've seen. I've been thinking about maybe doing a showcase of all these cool builds that you'll find on people's servers. Some of these are really amazing and the only people who see them sometimes are the people who actually play on the server. It would be nice to have them showcased, I think. I continued crafting and killing to level up as much as I could as I made my way toward the south side of the island so that I could start picking up some notes. I started this journey right during the turkey trial event, so the rates were pretty boosted, but also it's because Wildcard boosted the rates for these newer servers for players to catch up to the PC players. So getting levels was coming along pretty quickly. The beaches are all claimed, unfortunately, so you really can't even put down a fireplace. So if I needed food, I was going to need a raft. I gathered what I needed and I put one down and then started my fire so that I could eat something. As I took my raft out and headed south, I cruised along these gates. One of the major downsides to official beyond the pillars is overbuilding gates. When you don't have a flyer, a lot of the times the pathways are blocked and it can be extremely annoying. Aberration is by far the worst for this, but thankfully you have some decent people who are aware of this. Like this gate, this person could have easily been a jerk and blocked off this whole lagoon. Thankfully that's not the case. So I sailed down to the south of the island and parked my raft near the notes I was about to grab. So I grabbed the first one and went up to grab the second one and whoops. Well, I'm really glad I didn't get the second one before I fell, or that would have been a complete waste of time. I ran back up, grabbed it, and started leveling up. I found a raptor, a perfect first tame for me. It's something that could help me stay mobile, because I don't intend to pump a whole lot of stats into my stamina. I usually prefer pumping up my fortitude and weight early on. I knocked out the raptor and continued leveling up until he was finished. Again, the rates are pretty high right now, so taming this didn't take too much time. I got his saddle done up and rode him down to my raft. This little island right in front of the note run actually seemed like a good base spot. I ran around gathering some things to put up some pillars, only to find one lone pillar already there. I figured it was too hilly anyways, and small. Instead, I just farmed up some metal in the river rocks, and I crafted up some metal tools. I took my raptor, and we set sail, off to find a reasonable base spot. 
It wasn't long before I was delighted with a perfect bay spot, just up the way from the Red Ob. There was this nice little cove area. I had just built a base, well, sort of, here during my 100 days to catch them all, which you can go check out now on my channel, and I was shocked to see no one had built here yet. There was a base on the end and another one across the way, but none on this third side, nor was it pillared at all. Maybe it was because it was near a drop and people couldn't really build, or maybe these tribes just didn't get around to claiming this land in time. But either way, it's mine now. So even though this server is in its early days, this is an absolute gem to find. How no one has even put a beach bob base here yet blew my mind, and I was ecstatic to find a perfect spot on the beach. It's not the biggest land, but I don't need big as a solo player. I knew I had to make my moves though, quickly, in case someone came along and started pillaring it, before I could. When you find a spot this good, there might be someone right around the corner getting ready to pillar this land themselves. And this is where things get interesting. Pillars are generally seen as super toxic and super annoying, but in a few instances, they are super necessary. There is no other way to claim land other than putting down some structures, and if you have a really cool base idea and you can't build that whole thing in just an instant, well, it might take days, even weeks in real life, in which time someone else could come along and steal your land, which would suck preventing you from being able to build that really cool thing that you had envisioned. And it may not even be a troll trying to grief you, but someone who might accidentally takes your land because they didn't see you were already there, above or below or around a corner or something. So pillars are a part of it, and I had land to claim. If you are new to this process, it's important to know there is a proper way to do this. Putting down a single pillar will have it despawn in 12 hours, so you need multiple with another structure. The meta is a pillar and a ladder because it's cheap, and it will last a week or so in real life. But foundation spamming is a bad, bad thing. Please don't do this because it kills off the dino spawns and the resources. So while pillaring might be ugly, it at least doesn't make the island bare, ugly, and dino-less. I spent legit the whole half day just grinding pillars and claiming my land. It takes time, and you gotta be thorough. I put it as close to my neighbors as I could. They look to be done expanding. I got underwater because someone will almost surely come along and try pushing right up to my new land. So you really have to claim as much as you want, or somebody else will claim it. I had a few more pillars I wanted to put down. I was a bit paranoid about someone coming along and griefing me before I could even start building, so I wanted to be certain every gap in space was filled, not leaving any opportunities for trolls. I spotted a dolphin underwater and knew it would be a good one to get. I didn't have flippers yet, so being able to cruise around underwater could be really helpful. I fed him passively while I continued securing my property. Even though the rates are boosted, it's still a bit of a grind to tame things without at least prime meat. Fortunately, this new arc has babies everywhere, making prime meat early on super easy to get. I had a baby right on my beach, so I was able to get the dolphin tamed with prime meat, which saved a ton of time. Now that I felt good about my land, it was time to tame. A parasaur was grazing my lands, another great early tame. This level 15 took almost no time at all, so I brought him back, got him saddled up, and started collecting some berries. Narcotics specifically is what I needed. I wasn't planning on going on any sort of taming spree, but having narcotics ready at the moment is clutch, because usually it works like this. When you are unprepared and not looking, you find the thing you want or need. So, always being prepared is the key. But the Parasaur honestly sucks at getting berries. It was almost faster to try to do it by hand. Almost. I crafted up what narcotics I could, only to turn around and use them on a much better berry farmer. Just as I was saying, I wasn't looking for one, but this trike happened to be in the neighborhood. So I got my crossbow and arrows and I knocked out Old Blue here. While waiting, I mostly gathered what metal I could from the river rocks. My trike finished up. I was still very light on resources, so I had to hunt down some hide with my raptor to get my trike a saddle. I started farming berries because this thing is infinitely better than the Parasaur. Before I started getting any sort of structures, I really wanted to get myself a Dodicarus and maybe a beaver. Gathering stone without a Doad is an impossible grind, and I refuse to do it. It's not worth your time at all. 
So I headed out to see what I could find. Also, I needed chitin, so I headed into the swamp to find some bugs. But the bugs instead found me, and not the kind you want. First, the area was really bare, and it wasn't because it was foundation spam. This was buggy and glitchy, and nothing was spawning in. Then I started rubber banding like crazy. I mean, unplayable. I could not move at all. I couldn't even get out of this one single location. It was bad. I was very stuck. This is literally the worst I've ever experienced on a server. It's crazy. I thought maybe it was someone's base that wasn't rendering in, but that wasn't the case. I was likely stuck in a tree or something that hadn't spawned in for me. I should have just logged out and it probably would have fixed it, but instead I tried to force my way out. And after a bit of a struggle and a lot of frustration, I did get free. And I ran straight home because that type of bug is much scarier than anything that's supposed to be in the actual game. However, when I got back to base, I was a little disheartened. This server seemed really good so far. I had this amazing land, people in the chat seemed mostly friendly, and the ping was solid outside of that one area. But that one area was concerning. If it was like that permanently, I don't think I could play on this server. So I was seriously questioning on whether I should move to another server before I get too built up. But it is day four already. I spent four hours here though, and to have to do all that work, grinding up, getting my levels and finding a base spot wasn't appealing at all. So I just decided I would avoid that area for now. Maybe it'll work itself out. Right, this is art. What was I thinking? Anyways, I was hopeful at the very least it wouldn't be glitchy in the sky. But in order to test that out, I would need a flyer. A PT landed right on my property, so I knocked it out. I spotted my first fellow survivor as he was cruising on his Megatherium. Always a bit of a hesitation when another survivor comes by your downed tame. They themselves cannot hurt it, but if a wild dino was chasing them or attacking them, it could definitely hit my PT. It's one way people will troll you. Luckily, this was just a random survivor passing by. I actually struggled a bit to get prime meat for this guy. The raptor really wasn't harvesting much. I knew I'd need a better way to get prime meat since it'll be a long time before I can use kibble. But I got what I needed for now and fed the PT. I tamed it up but still had no chitin so I couldn't craft a saddle. But I parked it on my land and headed out to hunt down turtles. I was still afraid of getting stuck in the swamp so I held off on getting bugs and just went after the turtles keratin. With official rates, it's still a pretty big grind though, so it did take a little bit of time, much longer than I wanted. Once I got it, I spent a little more time farming berries since I was all out of narcotics by now, and then I took my first flight. I noticed all the beach just covered with bases, as expected. I am still shocked though I was able to find this spot on the beach like I did. I really didn't have any direction, I was just kind of exploring the area seeing what land was claimed and scouting a potential additional base spot. I flew over to where a beaver spawn is. Hopefully I could get myself some cementing paste. This is one of the biggest concerns with PVE when a certain rare resource or dino spawn is blocked by foundations. A lot of times this is done by accident. Maybe it's a newer player who doesn't realize the importance of that spot. So this is one instant where pillars are a good thing. This good soul had already pillared this beaver spawn. So this means some beach bob won't come along and block the beavers, which means I should hopefully have easy access to cementing paste without daily trips to the swamp cave. I got my paste and headed home, but was hit with my first crash. And it was more than a crash, it was a rollback. Fortunately though for me, I had only been flying around during that whole thing and the only progress I made was gathering up that little bit of CP. So the rollback put me back at base, really kind of the best case scenario for a rollback. I went back out to see if I could get that paste again though. Uh, I spotted a drop and I hopped off to grab it. Even though a rhino natha was right there fighting another person, I hope I didn't steal this drop from that person on the thyla, but such is Ark. Drops are truly first come first serve. I try to be considerate and share and all, but I wasn't about to sit and wait with that bug there, trying to decide who was there first, so I just grabbed the goods and I headed out. The beaver dams were indeed still there, so I grabbed the paste again and headed home. There was a shark attacking my dolphin, and in a panic attempt to save it, I hit my first J whistle. For all you console players, controller players out there, 
that's the whistle all button. And everything came into the water. Not ideal with the shark right there, but I only had a few dinos. The J whistle will get much, much worse. I can promise you that. I got them all back on land and I was ready to call it a day. I woke up the next day after only about 12 hours away in real life. I hopped on my PT and noticed my neighbors had been busy. They didn't just put up a giant lighthouse, they also decided to leave me a message. Well, 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 looks like I may have stumbled into my first pillar war. They didn't just leave a message, they parked their dinos and some boats with torches. And apparently torches are the new griefing method because they absolutely wreck your frames. I mean, to a point that it is pretty much unplayable. It felt like it was gonna blow up my computer. So it was a savvy but brutal move on their part. I basically had two options now. Start a war and retaliate, which is my natural instinct. I could have just started taming up some dinos and leaving them in their base and get even more aggressive with my pillars. But I wasn't about to start this journey by making a bunch of enemies. I was hopeful we could work something out because my thought was they had their gates up. If they really wanted this land, they should have pillared it and claimed it. I definitely wasn't trying to block them in, but I also wanted enough room to actually build myself. So I went with the peaceful option and I tried to reach out in chat. Turns out they were pretty friendly. I let them know I wasn't about to give up this gem of a spot, but I did agree to back away a little bit so they had some buffer room. I removed my pillars and they removed their dinos. A nice, peaceful resolution to something that could have literally ruined my entire time on this server. And it turns out, the peaceful route paid off, because to my surprise, I was gifted a very nice RG for cooperating. You see kids, being kind does pay off. This was literally my next tame I was planning on going after, so it really was a nice gift. I took my PT out the rest of the day to see what kind of goodies I could get from drops. I literally have nothing but my raft, so I was in need of anything even if it came from a green drop. I got myself some more CP, too. I gotta admit, this is really nice. I can't remember ever playing on an island server where there has been beaver dams pretty much any time I go over there. Truly thankful that someone was able to pillar that spot. Besides that, I got some average junk from drops. A decent pair of fur pants and meh saddles. But even this is still better than what I have, which is nothing. Saddles are nice too just because of being able to grind them for resources when I eventually get a grinder. But as a solo player, I can't unlock all the saddles. So it's annoying having to mind wipe every time if I needed a new one. So getting these random ones can really be a nice thing even if I don't ever actually use them. Before I ended the day, I did one last run around my base to make sure everything was secure and pillared for the area that I wanted. It was gonna be some time before I was gonna actually be able to build out, so pillars are an absolute must if I don't want to lose my land. Now that I had my land secured, it was time to get some building done. Before even crafting a single foundation though, I needed a Dodicarus. No point in grinding stone without one. So I took Freebs, that's my free RG, I know, such a creative name, into the Redwoods. Came across this cool base built up in the ruins. I'm always amazed at how quickly people are able to build up in this game. Definitely cannot be from a solo player. I found a level 15 and went after it. These are so useful, even this low level, and they do take some time to tame, so it's worth getting it. But you really honestly don't need much better than this once it has a bunch of levels pumped into it. While waiting, I figured I'd grab some nearby drops. Farming loot was definitely going to be a routine thing. These new ASA drops are so much better than the ones before. Even the blue ones can give out nice crossbows and quality loot. The Dodicarus was taking a bit long, so I grabbed some fences and flew back home to fence him in. It's an absolute must with long tame times because something will almost certainly come along and eat it if I don't. Also, this RG is so slow, I really miss zipping around on a skiff. I imagine I'm going to be spending a large portion of my 100 days just flying around from place to place on this slow ass RG. I spent some time harvesting metal by hand nearby my Doad while she tamed. I grabbed my gates and my doe and flew myself home because crowd pods were still a couple weeks away. I hopped aboard my doe and got to work, crushing stone and tossing it into my storage so that I could craft a bunch at once. Stone construction is the worst because you have to do it on your person and it's really slow and stone is really heavy. So I try to do it as much as I can, jam my inventory full and then craft and 
literally go AFK for five minutes or something because it literally takes five to ten minutes to craft a bunch of things. But without a beaver, getting wood was a bit tedious, so I actually didn't get all that many things crafted. When it comes to building, it's always a process. I like to build as I go. I put something down, and then I go from there. The build always evolves, and it never ends up being the same thing as it started in my head. But I needed something put down to get started. A place to put my structures and hopefully stop dilos from spawning in on my beach. So my first objective was just a small stone slab that I could basically transfer all my raft structures over to. I flew out to the beaver spot to see if I could amp up my wood production. No beavers, but once again I did get a couple of dams full of loot. I got the CP and the wood because I was in need of it for building. And when I got home, I found another stray dino at my base. But it didn't appear to be someone trying to grief or troll me. It looked like someone may have just DC'd. Hopefully that was the case. Otherwise, this Sarko was going to get a structure built over the top of it. After some time had passed, the Sarko was still there. But it had moved. And that honestly had me a little worried. I thought maybe it was indeed a troll. Someone must have moved it, right? But they didn't move it off my property. Couldn't do anything about that now, so I just left it. I took my PT out for a quick loot run and to grab some more CP. Nothing to write home about for the loot, but once again, more beaver dams. I was still so shocked that every time I came over here to find them, they were here. I don't even get this lucky on single player. And that took about half the day. But once I got back, I grabbed my RG and my tranky stuff to go right back out to grab a beaver. There were a couple over there this time, but I went after the low level 15. It's just like the Dodicarus, where it can still be really useful at a low level and infinitely better than farming by hand. Plus, the beaver is kind of high maintenance to tame, so the low level should make my life a lot easier. I spotted a fellow survivor nearby with his Giga. Fortunately, my beaver was already down, so I didn't have to worry about him accidentally eating it. However, that same Giga may cause some issues for me in the future. Hint, hint. Anyway, I couldn't really afford to leave the beaver side, so I did some grinding nearby. It took about 20 minutes to tame, 25 or so, which is still pretty brutal considering the high rates and how low of a level it is, but I tamed him and flew him home. The last bit of the day, I did some organizing. My loot was starting to pile up and the good old anxiety was starting to creep in. So, organization is key. I could finally start grinding out some structures, and that is exactly what I did to start the day. This is where I can begin to make the argument that grindy nature of this game can be very satisfying. While you may think of this as tedious or time consuming, for me, it's therapeutic. Seriously, this type of activity is not something I want to be doing all the time, but in this specific instance. I am just waking up in real life. I have a cup of coffee, starting out the day real slow and chill. My heart's not racing trying to do some hard thing in the game like running caves or boss fights. My anxiety isn't boiling over trying to find whatever tame I'm endlessly looking for. It's just a very low key, real chill, almost mindless activity. It's like any resource farming game. I mean, they make entire games that are just about farming resources, and there is definitely a satisfactory element to this process. It's just not the same when it takes 30 seconds and you literally have all the resources you could ever need. It's the grind and the slow buildup, and what's great about ARK, all that work isn't just for nothing. I will eventually use those resources to build. So while you may shrug off this as a time-wasting, tedious task, I implore you to look at it from a different angle. So now I was in need of a better way to get metal. Farming these river rocks just isn't going to cut it anymore. I crafted myself a wood tree platform and headed into the redwoods. I felt like every tree is already claimed, but I flew around for a bit and I found a spot to call my home. It had a nice little metal reserve nearby too. So even though I didn't have an Anki yet, this would be a perfect spot. I could eventually put a forge here and turn this into a small little base. I tossed down my sap tap as well. Getting that sap for kibble and cakes eventually, always a good thing to start on that early. I grabbed a bit of metal and then headed home. And a pretty uneventful day, but grinding resources took a large chunk of it. 
I began getting my stuff put down in a more permanent spot. I took it off my boat and put it onto my stone platform. I was set on getting a fabricator built up. I had most of what I needed already except for the oil and poly. So it was time to head up north. The one downside to having my base all the way down here is getting poly. That sweet, sweet organic poly is the way to go, but it's so far away, and my PT wouldn't be able to carry much of it, so I have no choice but to resort to my slow RG and these long, like 5-10 to 10 minute flights up north. This will sadly be such a large part of my time, but such is the way. I made sure to grab everything I could up here that I didn't have. Some obsidian, some crystal, some silica pearls, oil, and of course poly. I'm still in need of all resources and making as few trips up here as possible is the most ideal. While farming I saw a couple of Ankies that were looking real nice. I didn't intend to tame one, but I figured why not. I knocked them out. One was eaten by a carno, but the other was hanging in there. I didn't have my fur, so I kept getting really cold and I froze to death multiple times. Also, I was having a hard time with this UD nearby who kept fearing my RG. What should have been a super simple Anki tame was taking way more work and time than it should have. So I said to hell with this and I left it behind. I grabbed some more metal, more cementing paste, more drops, and headed home. And when I got home, I crafted my fabricator and I put it in place. And by the end of that, this day was over as fast as it had started. Back to the grind. I spent a good portion of this day grinding more resources. It'll be a pretty common thing for me to spend at the very least a couple minutes gathering stone when I first log in. Usually just one run through to fill up my doid, but today I did more than that. I started crafting some of the other things I needed like a cooking pot and a ton of fiber. A big priority for me now is getting my crops and honey squared away so I can craft kibble and other things with it. I grabbed my trank stuff and headed into the redwoods. I was in search of a bear, because I like to use them to get bees. I didn't have an easy way to break the hive, so I was going to need something to tank the hits. I found a good enough bear and knocked him out in pillar land. This whole area is very heavily pillared. I imagine it's because it's the swamp and it's a rhino spawn. While I don't intend to build anything over here, the problem was keeping my bear safe. No gates, no fences, or anything could be put down because it would be too close to enemy foundation. Which is why you can lose your tames to something stupid and lowly like a Dilo. RIP! I found another one and started over. For this one I stuck by it. Other than finding some prime meat, I did not leave its side. And because it's another low level, it took less than 10 minutes, so really not that bad. Had it been a high level, it would have been way worse sitting by protecting it. It's another one of those situations, had I had kibble, I would have went after something better. But I do not have kibble. So this guy should do the trick. We are still some days away from cryopods, so I rode him back to my tree platform base and I parked him there. I made another trip up north. I was already in need of a bit more poly and this time I grabbed some pelt so that I could actually make some fur armor so I wouldn't freeze to death next time I came up here. Once again I found an Anki and I decided to go after it. It's really the last resource farmer that I need at this time, so I should just get it out of the way. Another pillar nearby, so I wasn't able to protect it, but there was nothing hostile, so it should be okay here. But I wasn't about to waste my time again failing to tame it, so I just stuck by it. I was getting kind of bored though, honestly, so I flew over to grab some more poly while it was nearing completion. I grabbed him once he was done, and I made the long flight home. It really sucks that my RG can't even make this flight without stopping. Gonna need something with a little better stamina. I stopped at this fellow survivor's box base to replenish the old stamina. When I got home, I tidied some things up around the base, crafted myself a forge, and then took my newly acquired Anki into the Redwoods to find myself a bit of metal. The plan was to set up a makeshift metal farm out here on my tree platform. I wanted to leave my Anki out here so I could spawn in on a bed, hop on an Anki and farm up some metal, and then just make one big trip back once I have a good stockpile. So I got my forges set up, but just as I was about to head out, I spotted a Rex right near my tree. And since this is literally the first Rex I have seen this entire time, I had to tame it. Not only that, but it was conveniently right near my base and fixated on something and a level 115 so yes this is happening i didn't even need a trap 
I began tranking away. It stayed biting whatever it was after for quite a while. But I ran up to him to finish him off, and when he was close... I was trying to get him close to my base as possible, because if he goes down too far away, there are enemy bases nearby and I will not be able to fence him in. This is the best Rex I've seen yet, so I really wanted to make sure I could tame it at near 100% effectiveness. So walls are a must. Once I got him down, I flew back home to grab some wooden fences. I came back and fenced him in, so he was safe from the baddies. He was going to need some prime meat. I flew around the redwoods getting racers, but even with the boosted braids, prime meat was a little annoying to gather. It took more time than I wanted, but I got what I needed eventually, and I went back to my Rex. With these rates, it took about 20 minutes to tame up, and I had my first Rex. I was pretty excited. Boss fights were a long ways away, but I needed a way to get kibble, and Rex eggs would be useful. So ideally, I still want to get myself a bunch of female Rexes that I can eventually use as boss breeders anyways. But seeing as how this was the first Rex that I've even seen, we will see how long that process takes. I got my little metal factory situated, and I hopped aboard my Anki to farm up some metal. The process was slow, but still much faster than doing it by hand. Eventually, I will need to upgrade my metal farming process, though. But for now, this is going to have to do. After a decent day of farming, I headed back home. I found this gem of a dolphin saddle in a green drop of all things. Again, just showing the value of just picking up every drop that you see. Once again, I started this day continuing my quest to gather as much stone as possible before the event ends. My main goal is to get a base built up before the boosted rates are done. Farming is already time consuming and it will take way too long for what I'm trying to build if I wait until true one times. So back on the Doodigris, back on the trike for thatch, I figured it'd be a good time to craft some medical brews. The industrial cooker is a long ways away. Crafting things in a cooking pot is super annoying, so I really didn't do that much, but with only primitive armor, I figured I'd, it'd be nice to have something. And along with that, some other basic things I would need so I could actually engage in some fighting. Shotgun and shells and some more protection. I had a ton of pistol ammo from the drops, and even though it's pretty weak, I figured I'd rock it since I have so many bullets. I do like the fire rate on these, and it can get you out of a pinch if you get stuck. I flew back up to grab my metal and hit up a drop on the way to find a nice pair of flippers and a decent flak chest piece. I brought stuff with me to go after a bee, so I hopped on my bear and I set out to find a hive. I pulled out my shotgun and pistol and started blasting away, but when the hive broke open, no queen. Hmm, this does happen sometimes unfortunately, so I was just going to have to find a new one, and was a little annoyed. I didn't quite need honey yet, so I just held off for now. A bigger priority was metal, so I went back to farming with my Anki for the rest of the day. And just as I was getting ready to log off, a server message popped up announcing a major server update. These messages are sometimes the most frightening thing because it only ever gives you 15 minute warnings. So if you just entered a boss fight, which is like the worst case scenario, or if you just started like taming something, or if you're just stuck somewhere like in a dangerous cave, it can be a nightmare of a message. Fortunately for me, I was kind of best case scenario as I was getting ready to log off anyways. I headed back to my main spot and I found my poor dolphin getting attacked by a shark. I dealt with it but another happened shortly after. Easy enough to kill, but this was getting to be a problem and super annoying. I didn't bother wasting time though building gates because I knew I could just get a new dolphin if it did die. Plus that 124 saddle I had on him was pretty legit, but I got back to grinding stone, wood, and I got myself some fiber too. I grabbed some flint also to craft some more gunpowder for my shotgun ammo. I crafted some crop plots so I could get the process started. Today was very much about stocking up on resources. I still have so much to gather and I needed a good day of just grinding. I got everything though. Wood, stone, thatch, fiber, flint, metal, spark powder, and so on. A boring day, but a necessary one. So that big update that happened recently was actually the cryopods. They did it. They actually added them to the game. And this was a huge relief. It was fun and nostalgic for a short little bit playing without the cryos, but that was short lived and I was definitely ready to have them back. Plus the server performance was definitely going to need it because everybody at this point already had a ton of dinos out and having them cry out up would certainly help. 
but why I was really excited because now my freaking dolphin wasn't going to get attacked anymore. Hooray for cryos. But first, I was going to need to craft some. I didn't have any metal that I would need for them, so I went back into the redwoods to get some. On the way, I ran into my first rhino Natha, and it was a male. This low level 15 was an easy target. I landed on a fellow survivor's tree platform and I blasted him with my shotgun. My RG would have been fine, but doesn't do all that much damage. Quick and easy death, and I got my first hormone. Before I could make it to my tree platform, I saw this gorgeous event, Green Thyla. I had to tame him. When it comes to cool looking dinos, I will almost always stop what I'm doing and go after them. Getting event colors are a big deal for trading later on, and have a lot of value because you can only get them during events or through mutations, which is a lot harder. And I was looking for Thylas anyway, so this was a must tame. I stood on my tree platform and tried to hit him, but he kept going underneath. I hopped on my bear to tank the hits, but I almost lost my bear from the Thyla's bleed. So I hopped on foot and I hunted him down. He was already on the run at this point, so I was able to get him down quickly without being killed. I didn't want him to go too far from me because there was too many enemy gates nearby. Unfortunately, he went down and I was unable to fence him in. So I still needed something to feed him with. I started gathering prime meat and I put down some campfires so that I could cook his meat since they liked cooked meat. But after struggling to find enough and being paranoid something would attack my thyla just sitting there, I decided to just use regular cooked meat, which I already had. That way I didn't have to leave his side. And when I checked the dodo decks, it was only going to take a minute or two longer and I only lose a couple levels. I'm not taming this thing for its levels anyways, just for its colors. So using cooked meat was just going to make my life a lot easier. And when he finished, I carried him safely to my tree platform since I didn't have any cryos yet. It was time to head back out and search for more bees. I found another hive and I got to work with my shoddy. But when the hive broke open, this time the bee appeared to mesh into the tree. Awesome. I waited and I walked around, but it never unmeshed and disappeared eventually. So once again, no luck. But there were plenty of hives, so I just went out to find another. This time the queen popped out and I chased her down and I fed her some rare flowers. But something really, really weird was happening. Excuse me, do you know you're in my game chat? My voice chat was tangled with somebody else. All of a sudden, I hear a random voice saying, Excuse me, did you know you're in my voice chat? Or something like that. This random person and I were forced into a conversation. I had no idea at first, and I was just talking to myself embarrassingly, only to find out this random person is trying to talk to me. At first, I thought it was an in-game proximity chat, but it turns out I was nowhere near this person. Not only that, but I was on a PC through Steam, and he was playing on PlayStation. It was so weird. I have never seen anything like that happen before. But after a good laugh, we just had to log out and it fixed the problem. Ark is goofy. Anyway, to round out the day, I finally got myself some cryos and a fridge and I put my beehive down so that I could start getting my honey. My poly reserves were getting low, so I headed back up north to farm some resources. Just like any time I come up here, I tried to get everything I could. I needed more oil, I grabbed what silica pearls I could, and I got some crystal. Also, drops, because always. I spent more than half the day up here between farming and the long flights, but it was a needed grind. On the way home, I stopped at Home Tree to farm some more metal, and while doing so, I spotted another Rex. It was a low level, but it was a male, which I needed desperately, so that I could start popping out eggs with the female that I tamed earlier. I brought him over near my tree, and I knocked him out. I was able to fence him in since it was near my base, so I did just that. His low level meant he was not going to take long, so once he finished, I headed home to main base. I used that poly I got to craft myself a jenny and a fridge. The preserving bin was doing just fine for now, except I needed a way to better preserve my rhino hormone. It lasts like two weeks or something in the preserving bin, but I honestly didn't know when I was actually going to be able to use it or get another. So I really wanted to preserve it forever in the fridge, or essentially forever. I dubbed my Thyla the Grinch. I cryoed some dinos for storage and did a bit of organizing to end the day. Loot is starting to get overwhelming and I don't have enough metal to craft a vault. Soon enough though, soon enough. Back into the redwoods to get my generator and cryo fridges set up. 
This was so I could just pop over here from a bed and farm some metal and then pop back home without taking that long flight every time. I got back and made in my Rexes to get my first Rex egg. I really, really miss the egg incubators right about now. Besides the fact that it's just easier to hatch the egg, it allows you to see what kind of dino you got inside. I specifically am only looking for females, so if I could know this egg is a male, I could go ahead and use it for kibble. But incubators are a very, very, very long ways away. Sadly, after a ton of resource farming, I finally got to crafting some stone structures. I began collecting my dino poop for fertilizer since I didn't have a dung beetle yet. And once again, I was attacked by a shark. But this one was a nice level 130, so instead of killing it, I hopped on dolphin and knocked it out. I had hopes of getting some good sharks and bazzies for the ocean caves, but also to fight alphas. I'm pretty sure it's the best method to get black pearls, and sharks are definitely underrated. Most people use Moses or Tussos, but sharks have insane pack buffs and the bleed. So this 130 will be a nice start. It would take a bit, so I did some standard base management stuff while waiting. Also flew out to grab its prime meat from snakes and racers in the swamp. It finished taming and I spent the rest of the day crushing stones, but not with my doad, with my Anki, so that I could get flint. Yup, starting off the day with some more grinding, but not just grinding, it was time to build too. I started with foundations. I absolutely love that the foundations can now be raised and lowered. It was a huge drawback for building an ASE. However, I was still running into a few issues with being able to place them, but such is part of the process. Whether it's because I'm too close to a drop, too close to an enemy, or just can't put something down, building is always dynamic and you have to be able to adjust as you go. I wasn't exactly sure what I even wanted to build at this point. I just wanted to get foundations down so I could have a place to build my workshop, get the smithy and forges over somewhere not on that temporary slab by the water. I put things down, I changed my mind, I picked them back up. It was a process that took the whole day, but eventually I started getting an idea of what my base was going to look like. Basically what I had in mind was an open workshop area to the left and then everything on the right to be enclosed. I felt really good about it and happy with the idea. Now we'll see how long it actually takes to build and how much it changes as I go. After a bit of time off in real life, I was anxious to get back to building. The ideas were flowing through my head while not in the game. It's literally all I could think about, so I was excited to get back to it. I started filling in the foundations and I put some storage up to drop my stone wood thatch into for crafting stone structures. Then I went back to work, farming all the stone on my property. I like to build for aesthetics, not just practically. So a lot of my builds take extra time because of it. For example, these wall pillars are unnecessary for support, but it looks like a supporting structure and in my opinion, it makes the build uh, look a little more realistic and gives it some character. So building is something I need to be patient with if I want it to look the way I have in my head. And I dedicated the whole day to building and it felt really good. I got my workshop area completed so I could start filling things in. I even did some aesthetic work and I got some metal rails put up, which I really like how they look on the stone. And then I transferred my stuff over and that was the day. I started this day with some holiday cheer. I mean holiday hate because it's the winter wonderland event and in ARC it truly brings out the worst in people. The chat had some hostility with people stealing Raptor Claws. This is par for the course. Every year when Raptor Claws returns dropping his giant gifts from the sky, it's the same thing. PvE turns into PvP and the worst of people is brought out. It's funny too because the drops really aren't all that great. A lot of gilly and a lot of junk, but people insist on being selfish and greedy. Even though it's a holiday that's supposed to be about giving and caring for others, but it does the opposite. Quite ironic. And since I was all too familiar with this yearly occurrence, I had zero intentions of going after the drops. Anyway, early on I got my Rex's breeding to get my first egg. On official rates it can take up to two days. That's 48 hours to breed again, so it's imperative that you get them going as soon as possible. The rates right now will still have me waiting at least 12 to 24 hours to breed again, so still a very long time in between. I had some organizing to do, which can always be time consuming, and then I headed into the redwoods to get myself some more metal. A low level RG showed up while in my tree. It was a level 5, but a female, so figured it'd be a good one to get so that I can start making RG eggs. 
RG should be easier to get for egg so until I can stock up on female Rexes. I was planning to use superior kibble from RG eggs as much as I could, so I knocked it out and I continued farming while I waited. When I got back to my main base I mated the RG so they could hurry up and go on their refresh timer. The rest of the day was dedicated to fixing up my base. I continued right into the next day as I started getting things placed down, the build in my head was really starting to come together, and I was kind of fixated on progressing it. I spent all morning about a third of the day building up, then headed out to grab some CP and some more drops. I was also getting annoyed with picking my dino poop so I grabbed myself some bug repellent and I headed to the easy cave near the volcano to tame a dung beetle. There's usually one of these in the earlier parts of the cave so I didn't bring a whole lot with me, hoping that I could just sneak by or just quickly kill off anything in there, but I ran into some spiders that were blocking my path so I had to kill them off, but no dung beetles. Further down there was a heap of snakes and bats and I was definitely unprepared with my primitive armor and weapons. Three health brews and no lesser antidote. But this cave should be easy enough so I pushed forward. Sadly, there was no dung beetle anywhere though, but since I was here I went ahead and grabbed the artifact and the drops and then made my way out. I'll have to come back another time for the dung beetle. That little adventure took most of my day. After the long flight home, I continued just working on my base. Now that I had some egg layers, I needed to get myself the Oviraptor. Their new ability to pick up eggs is insanely helpful for these raids. Once I knocked one out, there was a Fiomia right next to it. It's another useful dino. Since I couldn't find a dung beetle, this will be the next best thing. I can force feed him the stem berries and he'll poop for days. And since I only have a few crop plots, the poop should be more than enough fertilizer for now. I snagged him and the piggy and headed into the redwoods to do some more metal farming. I figured any time I'm out about this way, it made sense just to pop in and grab a little bit of metal. It took about 5 minutes to farm all the rocks near my tree, so it was worth a quick run. Back home I tossed out all my females around my oviraptor so it could start collecting the non-fertilized eggs too. I've got a bunch of dinos, I've got a bunch of structures. I'm nowhere near as built up as I want to be, but I've pretty much reached that point where running around managing everything is starting to take up a lot of time. So the rest of the day, and probably a little into the next, I did just that. I was ready to take a break from building though and get back to taming. I grabbed my taming gear and I headed up north. I was still looking for anything that had event colors to tame. Specifically, I had a lot of interest in getting RGs. My goal was kind of to get a decent stat line mixed in with some really cool colors. So I was on the hunt for high level RGs and event colors. But as Ark goes, when you are looking, you shall not find. I spent half the day and I got nothing until I ran into Santa's big helper. I took my prize, some coal, some mistletoe, and a hat, and after basically the whole day I found no RGs. I flew everywhere and it was very disappointing. I started heading home and was at least able to come away without it being a total waste of a trip. I found an Ovis. I already had my veggie cake on me so it was a quick and easy tame. Right when I logged in on day 25 I had another shark attacking. It's like it was just waiting for me to log in. Fortunately my shark is there to protect my weak dolphin. Still though, gates were gonna need to happen soon. It was starting to be a real nuisance. But before I could even build them, and since it's the start of a fresh in real life day, I had some farming to do. Typical farming routine, wood, stone, thatch, and metal. This actually took most of the day. When I got home, more sharks waiting and ready to attack. Surprise, surprise. But I had an actual good surprise this time. A really dope event shark. So I knew I was gonna tame this one. I did have some interest in also creating a shark breeding line too. I headed up north again to grab the essentials, more poly pearls and another Bigfoot to get more coal and mistletoe. I was trying to collect it at this point. There was a couple event skins that I wanted to get my hands on, but the real thing I wanted was dino candy. It lets you boost your dino speed up to 15% for 24 hours. Also, it gives cool colors. So I was collecting that to craft as many of those as I could. I was able to get myself another bug hormone on the way home. I pretty much spent this whole day building. I even got my fireplace and Christmas tree crafted. I just learned about this new event thing where you can get gifts from Santa right at your base. Specifically, you can get cryo dinos, which is amazing. This is a new addition to the Winter Wonderland and I had to check it out. Since I wasn't brave enough to go fight over stupid raptor claws drops, I love the idea that I could get some gifts right at my base. And word has it, the dinos it gives you have one boosted stat. So as a breeder, I was really looking forward to getting lucky with starting a breeding line of, well, anything. I wasn't quite ready to grind out the XP needed to get myself a gift, so I waited a few more days. It's funny, even after spending hours on my base, I feel like no progress has been made. 
Despite all the things that I love about the slow process, sometimes you just want to have it built. But I did not go off and do other things, so I continued putting some ceilings in and try to get my main workshop area finished. I actually found it a lot harder to get myself wood compared to stone. My beaver is pretty low level, and these trees, they don't give that much. So putting this wooden roof was actually a serious pain. But the reason I didn't just use stone is simply for aesthetics. Unfortunately, building for looks takes time. I spent another two full days building. I kept hearing about all the cool dinos people were getting from Rapture Claws. It was time to get some gifts of my own. I put my charcoal and mistletoe in the fireplace and I wrote my letter to Santa. The cryo symbol appeared down low saying neutral. Now all I had to do by the end of the next day was to go off and fill my nice meter. If you kill aggressive dinos or tame things, it goes up. And if you kill babies or other dinos, it goes down. And you become naughty. I want to be as nice as I can, so I went after some of the mean dinos. I hopped aboard the RG and I hunted them down. But with so many spawns blocked, it actually was kind of hard to find enough. You need a lot, and there's not really a concentrated area to find a whole bunch of aggressive dinos on this server. So I spent a ton of time just flying around. Not a good strategy. I went all the way up north, I went into the ice cave, but that was dumb. It'll take me a whole day to kill one dino, and I don't think high level gives you more, so that wasn't gonna work. I had already wasted three quarters of the day and my dino meter was barely moving. I hadn't even gotten off of the neutral status, so I was getting a little worried. It felt kind of impossible without a giga or something to eat everything in my path. The RG was killing too slow and flew too slow to find enough things. But eventually I made my way to the swamp and I found that to be my best option. Tons of aggressive dinos here and fairly easy to kill with my RG. And finally, after 45 minutes, the meter went up to slightly nice. But that wasn't maxed, it went all the way to super nice and I had every intention of getting it there, except time was running out. I had to be in my bed when the clock struck midnight or I wouldn't get my gift. So just as I was about to kill everything in the swamp, I ran into a pink Baryonyx. And, well, you know how I feel about event colors. Baryonyx is the cave meta in this new arc, so event berries were definitely a top priority. I stopped to tame this one. But after I continued killing everything in the swamp, I found that snakes and dilos were the best way to go. There's a ton of them and my RG can actually kill them off quickly. Also, leeches were everywhere and a great way to boost my meter. I slaughtered everything I could as fast as I could, but nighttime was quickly approaching and just before midnight I had to head home to my bed. Unfortunately, I only got it up to very nice, but next time I attempted I at least have a much better strategy. Off to bed to see what gracious gift Raptor Claws is gonna give me. A freaking Perlovia with food stat. Well, that's going in the garbage. Yep, so a completely useless tame. I was pretty bummed. This thing is literally useless on PvE. So that was a disappointment. A waste of a long grind. But hey, at least I got a free cryo out of it. So it was finally time to get some breeding going. I was going to need an imprinted baryonyx to make caving easier, but I only had the female, so I was in need of a better male. Off to the swamp I went. I found a level 45 and I went ahead and went after it. Not ideal, but I was hopeful I could get my higher level stats onto it eventually. Plus I didn't have any males and a couple females so I wanted to at least get something to start making eggs. But the server was super laggy right now. Just watch the delay on the hit registration. But that actually made taming easier because the berry couldn't even hit me. I just stood there and knocked it out. Other than that early experience in the swamp, I haven't had any major issues outside of normal lag. Typically in the evenings when the servers are mostly full, the lag does get pretty bad, but I mostly play in the morning, so for me it's never usually out of control. But this was pretty bad, probably because the server was super full right now. It's definitely a downside to official servers, but it's actually pretty rare for them to be so full. Obviously ASA is still new and the fact that the island is the only server makes it worse. The lag will definitely smooth out as more maps become available, but for now it's just kind of something you put up with and you'd be surprised how used to it you get. While in the swamp, I also knocked out a frog. It was definitely my plan at the time to use it for the swamp cave as a means to farm CP. Even though the beaver dams were spawning regularly, at some point I need a whole bunch more. I got my berries, made it up, and my rexes were ready for another mating too. Now that I had some eggs, I needed a safe place to put them. I did not have an enclosure for my base yet, and since there are no egg incubators, I had to build a shelter. Or someone can literally just come along and steal them. And when you have eggs that take literal days in real life to incubate, like the Giga Egg, 
there's a real good chance somebody will come along while you're offline and snag those eggs. So an enclosure is a must. I wanted my permanent breeding room to be upstairs, but that was still a long way from being built. So I tossed up a temporary one, or at least I started. I headed up north to get more poly so that I could craft the air conditioners. As soon as I got up there though, I saw this beautiful RG. I didn't even hesitate. I tossed down some gates, trapped it, and knocked it out. I flew off to gather the other resources and ran into my first Yeti. I really wanted to fight him, but he is way stronger than me. I don't have anything that could even come close to destroying him. And he throws freaking snowballs, which is brutal. So I couldn't stick around too long to admire him. Although I did attempt to drown him, but that did not work. So I moved on. I got my resources and I went back for my RG. On the way home, I spotted a red Megatherium and I tamed him too. I also ran into this green and purple Rhino. Again, two tames that I don't know if I'll ever use, especially because they are lower level, but their colors mean they must be tamed. And just as my Rhino finished, another RG. Not exactly the coolest looking, but it had a couple cool colors I wanted. Getting certain colors in certain spots is something I'm always looking out for as well. That way I can make the color combos that I want in the future. So taming everything, literal everything with event colors is important, even if it's ugly as this one. Once those tames finished up, I headed back home, but I made a quick stop in the swamp to get a female frog so that I could start breeding with my male. I had just a low level for these frogs, so I knew getting an imprinted one was a must, and I made my way home to get my air cons crafted and set up. I tossed out my eggs and then started crafting a safe incubation room. I've had a couple randoms run through, and just because I'm a little paranoid, I parked my trike over the top of them, hopefully hiding them. I didn't need it to be long, just long enough to get an enclosure crafted. But I got distracted doing some other things around the base and the day somehow just flew by. It took most of the day, but I got my incubation room set up and then tossed out some eggs. I hopped on my meg to grab some fish to have for the berry and then continue breeding my dinos that were ready. But as I was looking at my breeding room, I was disgusted. It was just a box. Everything I stand against, a boring box. So even after an hour of building it, I tore it all down. And this is how I spend my time. I moved my air cons upstairs and then just turned this enclosure into the temporary egg incubation room. Since it wasn't about design, this worked really well for a temporary location. And all I had to do was add a door. I wasn't quite ready to get in a building with glass, but I did still need crystal. I made a trip to the volcano and I basically spent the whole day farming. Some of my eggs were hatching, so I was up for mom duty. I had some babies to take care of. No baby troths yet, so I am still in need of watching over them and hand feeding the babies until they are juvenile. So it was a lot of just staying near my base, but heading out to farm some resources for a bit after each feeding, then coming home, trying not to spend too much time away. I had a decent bit of eggs that kept hatching, which forced me to stay in mom mode for longer than I would have liked. Every time one hits juvenile, another new batch of babies was born. But at least I have cryos now. This is actually impossible to do before. And speaking of cryos, with all these new babies, I was desperately in need of more. So I grabbed some of my newly harvested crystal and I quickly flew to the ob to craft some, and then right back to mommy mode. But I did start construction on my upstairs as well. Some time had passed and a new day in real life, so it was time to get more metal. The meg in the ocean is still my quickest method, so I hunted more underwater. And while out searching for some more colorful dinos to tame, I ran into a 150 baryonyx. I quickly busted out my crossbow to trink it, but before I even had a chance, the same reckless giga as before was, was mowing down everything in the swamp, and it bloodied the crap out of it. I tried pleading with the giga, and he apparently got the message, but the berry was already so bloody, my crossbow would kill it for sure if I tried to trank it now, so I didn't even bother. I thought maybe it will survive and I can come back when it is healed, but I was pretty angry. Not that it was his fault or he was trying to intentionally kill it, but it's already so hard to find max level dinos on the island. So it was such a sad thing to see it go down. The last bit of the day I was redeemed with this event Thyla and a super easy tame, only because of the leg. Usually leg makes it way harder, but in this instance trees weren't spawning in and there was rubber banding so hard neither of us could move. But my shot still counted and he seemed not to be able to attack me. So for once the crappy server performance actually helped me out. <laughs> I fenced it in and headed home to feed my juveniles. It was a usable level Thyla, and since I didn't have kibble, I wanted the best taming efficiency I could get. I ended up slaughtering my own for its mutton, so I could cook it up and feed the Thyla its favorite food. When I flew back, all the trees had actually spawned in, so I could see what I was getting stuck on. But despite that, I was able to tame it with no issues. I went back to look for that 150 berry, but of course it was gone. 
I did find a 120 though, and I knocked him out, and I got another frog. For the berry, I actually took the time to craft some kibble. I was still looking for the best stats on those that I could get. On the frog, I just didn't really care much. But once I tamed them, I brought them home to mate, and randomly tamed this moss chops who was just here on my beach. I never really used these things much, but I thought maybe I could use it to gather poly, so it might be useful. I was getting an itch to go after some raptor claws gifts, so I hopped on my PT and I set off. I grabbed some regular drops, hoping to get close to one, and my first one I got to, of course, somebody else is already there. And the same with the second. It was either late or early in the day in real life, so I figured I could get at least one. But nope. There are still hawks everywhere out here doing nothing but farming these drops. And I really got nothing from the other drops, so it was quite a waste of time. I bred my event thylas and I got myself a pretty decent baby. Good enough to use if it's imprinted and it had this cool green, so I was happy about it. Now, I just had to raise it. So as I have been doing, I had to stick around to play mommy. I knocked out and tamed another megalodon near my base and I just focused on imprints. I put up a temporary fence for my frogs to breed in. I wasn't confident in leaving them in the open water since they need to be for breeding. Once my meg was finished, I bred my sharks as well. I was in full breed mode at this point, trying to get my rexes, argies, cave tames, the berry and the frogs, and my shark breed line started. While out farming mead, another awesome event shark. I definitely needed this one, so I knocked it out. But there were a couple other things I found too. I got myself a bazzy, another tame I'm looking to breed, and then more sharks. To help the breeding process speed up a bit, I need females. I was still in need of more pearls though, so I just committed to going up north to gather what I could. While there, I found another irresistible tame. I had to knock it out. And this was supposed to be a quick trip, but I found a UD too. So since this community trap was right here, I went for it. I got it and then the Carno trapped, so I just needed to get rid of the Carno and I should be good. I hung around, farming Polly, getting what I could, like these event Ovis, until it was done. And then I headed home. And finally, I got a chem bench crafted too. My babies are starting to get a bit older, which means I can start spending some more time away from home. I went to the Redwoods River to hunt down an otter. It is not easy to find these in single player, so finding these here is seemingly impossible. And once you do, you better hope it's not a really laggy day, because feeding them is a nightmare. I got lucky and I found a level 10 after a while of searching, which meant I didn't need to have that many feedings. And fortunately, I got it before it was killed by something. On the way home, once again, distracted by a colorful event berry. It was very low level, but that was all the more reason to tame it. A quick knockout and that wouldn't take long at all, so I went after it. And to finish the day, I spent a little more time on my rooftop. I finally had some motivation to try to get another gift from Santa. So as soon as the clock started the day, I crafted my letter to Santa. That way I'd have the whole day to get the meter full. I started in the ocean, mostly because I still needed meat for my babies. So two birds, one stone. Something came up where I had to go AFK for a little bit, but I still had plenty of the day to get my meter full, so I spent almost the entire time doing so. Once again though, I was distracted by my babies at my base and a new Thyla being born. These little things took away from my time I could be filling the meter, and despite spending over an hour of just killing things, I was still not quite to super nice, only very nice. So I had to hurry to bed before I could get the last few kills. I was pretty disappointed because that was a brutal grind and it felt like a waste. If I do this again, I have to commit 100% to it and literally do nothing else. My cryopod spawned under the tree and I got myself a Kentro. Great, yay. Another useless tame, all that work for nothing. Such a waste. I logged into a megalodon attacking my dolphin and in a panic, I jay whistled. I had so many babies out and a lot of other dinos too since I still don't have a ton of cryos. So the day was mostly spent reorganizing my dinos and just doing some general maintenance around the base. I made a trip up north to hunt down another UD. I was really looking to start upping my kibble production. I couldn't use this trap here, but this area seemed cornered off enough. I felt safe with leaving this one here knocked out while I did the routine resource gathering up north. And once my UD finished, I went straight home to mate them. I continued to see people get really, really lucky with their Santa Raptor Claws gifts. I didn't want to do it, but I couldn't help myself. The jealousy was peaking. I wanted something cool for myself, so once again, I decided to craft a letter to Santa and grind out the deed. This time though, no distractions. I dedicated all my time to it and I went to the swamp right away. It still took a good 45 minutes, but I got there with plenty of time left in the day. So until it was time for bed, I just did some farming and breeding, but I was excited and hopeful. Please, please be something good. 
I got a snail. A freaking snail. It doesn't matter what good stat I got because it's a freaking snail. And a juvenile snail, which requires veggie cakes to raise. They are absolutely a no-no for breeding because you can just tame them. Another absolutely failed waste of time. Ugh, I was super annoyed. I thought getting that meter maxed out meant I'd have a better chance at something semi-useful, but nope. So, that's the end of that. As I started getting my rooftop built, I was in need of a constant flow of crystal. So, I spent half a day farming at the volcano, and then I got back to building. I was able to get it mostly enclosed by the end of the day, but still had just a little more crystal to get. It was once again early in the day in real life, so I thought maybe I could grab some rafter gifts. But, again, impossible. I flew around and grabbed regular drops though for a while, nothing exciting. I tossed out my babies and went into mommy mode, hanging around my base continuing to farm while my baby sharks get to juvenile. I was getting really annoyed with these shark attacks, so to protect my baby sharks I started building my water pen. Behemoth gates are so expensive, so I got done what I could just for some immediate protection for my sharks. And now that they were safe, I could actually leave my base. So I went out to farm a bit in the redwoods, and while out there I spotted a max level 150 RG. And it was a male, which I needed. This could be my stud. I could use him to pump up the stats of all those low level event RGs that I had been getting. So I quickly went back to grab gates so I could trap him and tame it. The leg was a bit rough right now, but I was able to get it trapped and knocked out. And because I wanted this so badly, I wasn't about to risk anything happening. So once I got its prime meat, I literally just stood there at my base, waiting for it to finish. It ended up with some pretty decent stats. I never bred RGs, and I can't remember what a really great stats are, but compared to my others, it was far and away superior. After being away from my base, I had to tend to my babies. I had some sharks being born, and then started breeding my RGs. Also, I got my rooftop finally enclosed. I moved my air conditioners over so I could just drop my eggs inside. Now they are safe from thieves, but I don't have to be crammed into that tiny hallway. I was running low on resources from the north, so I made a long trip up there. Just like every other time, I ran into some cool event tanks. I found an Anki, so I snagged it, but another RG2, and this one, a 145 event. I was able to get a trap set up on this little iceberg. This area is littered with enemy structures, so building a trap on the mainland isn't going to happen. Fortunately though, this sneaky trap should work. I got in there and started shooting, but because of the lag, I accidentally hit it after it was knocked out, and its taming effectiveness dropped to 83%. I was pissed. I really, really wanted to perfect tame this so I could have a 150 and a 145 to mate together. And this was an event. I was seriously angry about that. I didn't want to just tame it for colors because the colors were kind of ugly. So I tried to wake it up. I went home to get stimulants, but I had to farm and craft them first. Then I flew out and pumped them into the RG. I wasn't thinking clearly, and I've never actually had to do this before. So I just pumped this sucker full of these. And then I waited. Its health was low once it finally woke up, which took forever, so I tried feeding it some dodo birds, and that actually yielded up. Now I was ready. After almost a full day of already trying to get this thing, I was finally calm and ready to take it down. I started tranking it, and tranking some more, and then some more. It was taking way too long, like three times as many as it should have. Eventually, I busted out my magnifying glass, and I realized the torpor was still dropping rapidly. It was at this moment I realized I put way too many stimulants on him, and it was still waking up. But I persisted, and I pumped this dude full of darts. I was able to take it down, but its torpor was still draining. I had to race back to get more narcotics to keep him under. I got back to him just in time and started pumping him up with narcs, but the stimulants were just too strong. He woke up anyway. I just watched as he flew away because I was over it. I spent two hours on this thing and that was my limit. I was so annoyed. It wasn't much longer though that I was mostly redeemed. While getting the standard resources up here, I spotted a nice looking green RG that I was able to tame. And then another 145. This one wasn't event colors, but I was really happy with that green one I just knocked out, and I can always combine them later. So I trapped him, and I continued to farm all day up north. I was hoping to get enough resources for a grinder. On the way home, I made a quick stop in the Redwoods to tame another event, Thyla. I already had this color, but he had an orange belly that I wanted to add to the mix. 
So I know I said I wasn't going to be doing that Raptor Claws gifts anymore, but once again I was feeling jealous from people talking about their awesome gifts, so I couldn't help myself. But this time, like the first few times, I had babies out and I was distracted. So once again, I couldn't fully fill the meter. And because of it, I was gifted more garbage, another Perlovia, and I once again regretted my decision. I did some regular drop farming on my PT, but while flying around, I was on the lookout for a Rhinonatha. I had a few hormones stored up and I was getting very annoyed with traveling by PT and RG. So that was my next priority. I spent a lot of the morning preparing veggie cakes. I was planning on finding some snails to tame to boost my cementing paste stock. But when I went to the swamp, I ran into an event, Fairy. Their spawns are pretty dominated by buildings, so you don't see a ton of event ones on this server. So I'm definitely gonna go after that. But these guys take forever with berries, so I actually had to take the time to craft kibble for it. After I got him though, I found a snail nearby. I knocked him out and then continued to hunt more down. I came away with a few by the end of the day and tossed them out in my upstairs enclosure and set them to wander so they can start producing snail paste for me. So here's a public service announcement. Don't let your water tames follow you because they can die from going out of the water. A good old fashioned arcing. My best shark just died instantly because of a bug, and that was very upsetting. But this is not my first arcing, so I let it go and I moved on. I had my sights still set on getting a grinder. I had some more resources to gather for it, but then back to the ocean to tame more sharks. I was still looking for event ones and more female breeders as well. While down there, I also got my hands on a cool green dolphin and scooped up an anglerfish. Since I was still short on resources, I went back up north. The grinder is an absolute beast to craft, it takes so much, but it should be worth it. Another trip up north though also meant more RGs. This one I really liked too. And then when I got back, instead of the grinder, I ended up crafting an indie forge. I figured it'd be faster to get this up first, then go after the grinder, but of course that wiped out all my resources. I went back into my parenting mode and spent some time raising the babies and getting them food. Also getting new eggs incubated and hatched while around the base. Now that I had a forge, I needed a better way to get metal. The Redwoods wasn't cutting it. I claimed some land on the volcano near a metal rich spot. I grabbed my indie forge and I brought it out there. This will be a much more efficient method to gathering metal. I can spawn into a bed and have an RG or Anki over here to farm quickly, then carry it back periodically when I need it after it's been cooked. So I took the day to set up my little forge base, then right back home to continue raising my sharks. I started breeding my good stat RGs with some of the event colors one. It was going to be a long process to combine them, so I wanted to get started on that project. I had a bunch more eggs to incubate, so while they did, so I tested out my new metal farm. And then it was time to finally go after a Ranyonatha. I was getting so tired of using my RG to fly everywhere. So my strategy was to set up a cryo fridge out in the swamp near one of their spawns. That way I could just fly out there uncryo my dino and impregnate it quickly without having to haul something all the way over there. So I found a good spot and I put down my generator and a cryo fridge. And what do you know, a rhino natho was right there. I didn't have a bronto or anything else reasonable I could use, so I had to use my rex. I fed him the hormone and I let the bug attack me. I've only done this once before and it was on single player, so I wasn't very good at it. I was trying to remain patient, but it's so hard to see how much health the bug has. It doesn't get bloody the same way other dinos do. And the magnifying glass? You have to be so freaking close. So of course, I got impatient and I shot at it one too many times. I should have known, it's never that easy. The next day I flew around looking for more, but nothing to be found. I grabbed all the drops though, but man, this RG is slow. I had another priority craft, the industrial cooker. I really wanted that grinder, but the cooker is more essential right now, especially after crafting all those damn veggie cakes for snails. So I spent the whole day up north farming what I needed for that, and I crafted it once I got back. Then I spent the next day cooking and cooking a lot. I got some soups and kibbles and things, all while sticking around the base, taking care of my babies and watching over my eggs. While getting meat, I found another Bazzy to tame. I was still looking to breed these, so I needed some with a decent enough level. The ones I couldn't use, I farmed for oil. There used to be a lot more oil in the Ark waters, but now this is kind of the best method for me. I made in my new Bazzies once I got home and another round of shark breeding too. My egg hatching was starting to get a bit overwhelming. I was popping eggs faster than I could handle. I had to get more cryos to handle them all, but I was about to go into a very dedicated raising session. With this many babies out, I literally can't do anything else, at least for an hour or so. I put food on them, they eat, and by the time I've hand-fed all of them, 
I have to refeed the first ones. Raising unofficial is a full-time job. These UDs I was really not excited about. They take absurdly long to raise, but I really needed more females so I could exponentially increase my kibble production. Their spawns are a little blocked too, so they aren't super common to find right now on this server. Raising them is probably my best option as much as I hated doing it. After a day, they were at least old enough to hold enough meat that I could leave my base for 20 minutes or so at a time. So I used that time to continue getting more resources, mostly metal, but I was running out of food a lot quicker too, so I couldn't spend that much time. I had to do more food runs more frequently. However, being in the ocean so much did allow me to find some cool event tames, like this green and pink bassy that I snagged. The winter event had been going for some time now. I figured I'd finally try to get some drops. I was out doing normal drop runs, so I gave it a shot. And I finally got my very first event drop, but only one. And as I expected, it was pretty crap. When daylight came, I hunted down another Ranio. I took my Rex out into the swamp and we went to battle. This time I was extra careful and just took one shot with my pistol at a time. And with some patience, it impregnated my Rex. I was pretty close to home, so getting it back wasn't an issue. I got him parked safely at my base, but the Ranio was just right there, still nearby. I grabbed another Rex and I went to see if I could get baby number two. And, well, I'm starting to get a hang of it. I didn't have any more hormones or I would have gone back for a third, but I was really happy with two. They weren't the best Rexes to use, but I literally had nothing better. However, I still had a bit of a problem that I did not think about beforehand. Keeping the Rexes alive until the baby hatches turned out to be a really annoying grind. It's something like three hours until the baby hatches, and they burn through meat. I didn't realize this because the first time I did this, it was on a single player server. But on official, with these rates, it's like raising a giga for the amount of meat you need. And I was totally unprepared for it. So that is what I basically did until they were born. I could only get one imprint on one of the Rexes, but I was able to get all of them on the other. So when they were born, one of them was a pretty low level, but I was just happy to have them. These will change everything for travel for me. Next time I get one of these, I am definitely using a Bronto. The Rex was way too much of a meat grind. The hard part was over, but they still needed to raise. I had a lot of meat between my RGs and UDs that I had to continue gathering for all day long. And since I was so locked to my base, I got some more building and organizing done too. A day of house cleaning. I had crappy babies to expose of for their cryopods. I had food and ammo to craft, babies to imprint and feed and so on. This round of babies was finally old enough to be able to go away from home for a bit. It's these UDs that are killing me. They are just so slow. But I made my way up north for some more event hunting. I was still desiring even more RG colors, so I went to town snatching up every event one I could see. And while up there, shockingly, I saw a Rex. These things are actually rare on this server. Their spawns are mostly blocked. And to find a decent level event one, I knew I had to tame it. It's not like it was a really cool color, but still, it was better than anything I had. So I knocked it out. But near enemy territory, so I couldn't fence it in. I wanted its baby too, but I knew I'd have to tame this one first. So since it was in a dangerous spot, I left Render, hoping it would just peacefully tame up. I found another RG, grabbed that, and then when it was ready, I went back. And to my delight, its baby was still right there waiting by its side. I got the mama and the baby, and I headed home. Today, an update came, so I didn't really get much done. The event was getting closer and closer to being over, so I was on a mission to get as many event dinos as I could before I couldn't anymore. I got a couple more sharks in the mix and some colorful bassies as well. With all these new water tames, I had to start building out my water pen, so I got to work on that. Still, with these behemoth gates though, it's a slow process. I was at a point where I had enough dinos to really start getting into breeding. I wasn't really intending on doing a boss fight, but I wanted to breed some Rexes just in case. I had my UD still going, I had some frogs, sharks, baryonyx, RGs, thylas, and a few other random dinos I was breeding. I still didn't have a giga, and so meat farming was pretty much a full-time job at this point. With just 10 hours left in my 100 hours, going forward, I barely left my base. I was fully locked into breeding and constructing and crafting. I had a lot to get done at my base and a lot of meat farming. I lost track of time and these last 10 hours just absolutely flew by. I did loads of meat farming for my babies, tons of metal, crystal, obsidian farming, rex breeding, the imprints, kibble crafting, and more event taming. 
I also finally got my grinder going, which took forever. I had sharks to breed, and I had to deal with a pest at my base that may or may not have been kited over here. This journey actually took me past 100 hours because I lost track of time. So let me fast forward to at least show you the end result of the build that took most of my time. And as I sat there at my base, reflecting on my journey, I thought a lot about how this experience was different from my past playthroughs on Official. In the past, I've always had such strong communities. People are super active and trading and working together like a PvE game should be. There's been strong economies in-game for trading resources and dinos. People are mostly friendly and helpful, and it's just all around a good vibe. You'll notice I didn't talk about that much this experience, because this server ended up being crap. It was full of super toxic people that almost completely ruined my experience. I'm not just talking about those drop thieves, but truly just racist, offensive, just mean ass people that I personally don't vibe with. So much of the experience was ruined by that. But overall, even that can't keep me away from the addictive nature of official PvE. To me, there is something so comforting about the long grind to achieve your goal, whether it's a cool build or an epic boss fight. The slow process is incredibly satisfying, as long as it's completed. And even though this server was no good, Scorched Earth was on its way soon, and I had every intention to move there permanently. But now I at least have a home to come back to on the island. And if you hit that like button, it'll definitely make me get that 100 hours of Scorched Earth playthrough completed even faster. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I really appreciate you. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you soon, survivors, on Scorched Earth.